So today we're going to be answering the question, do I need to spend $200 on a capacity tester uh, for my solar setup or can I uh, use a $40 um, capacity tester that I purchased from Amazon? So let's take a look and see uh, what you guys think. Hello and welcome to Bright Spark Ideas, where ideas get turned into action. Uh, today uh, we're going to look at uh, a way of testing capacity for the batteries that I've built into my solar system. Um, I have a couple of different testers. I purchased one and decided that uh, it wasn't perfect for what I wanted to do with it because it only tested the um, voltage amperage etc in one direction and I purchased a second one uh, from Ali. Um, Ali is a uh, Chinese company and I'm going to uh, go through that process of building that into my battery bank. Um, let's take a look. So here's the, uh, the first uh, tester that I purchased from Amazon. Um, it's a pretty good tester. Um, it's uh, typical uh, Chinese uh, instructions that uh, you have to be the guy that actually wrote the instructions to understand them. But there's a pretty good diagram on the back that uh, allows you to figure out uh, how to wire this up. Um, as I said, it really, for me, because I can either test the voltage coming into the battery or leaving the battery, um, I could put a switch in there that could switch it backwards and forwards, um, but I thought the other tester that I found is a little bit more elegant. As far as the shunt, the shunt's a good shunt. The wires were a little short for what I wanted to do because when you see where I want to put it in my uh, battery box, I would have had to have made new cables for this. Um, anyway. This is going to be used in another project and you'll get to see that at a later date. So let's take a look at this one here. And once again from Amazon, company I think is Ali. Again, instructions, you need an interpreter to read the English instructions, but <clears throat> we can figure it out uh, pretty much from the diagrams. It's pretty straightforward. Um, this one is a circular one and I think it needs a two and one eighth circle cutter. So um, I'm going to have to look in the workshop and see if I have that size. Um, not much of a lip around here so I've got to be pretty accurate when I do the cut. Uh, ooh, this, this little plastic knob's a bit weak but uh, I uh, need to be a little bit careful when I do that. So this would be the piece that fits on the back here and holds it in place. Something like that. Um, let's take a look. Oh, here's the shunt. All right. Well, that's a good sturdy shunt. Look at that. That's a nice solid piece. So we got a B here. So I guess that would be for the battery and that would uh, be connected to the negative side of the battery bank. And P would be the cable running out to my inverter. And this is the cable here, um, which is okay. So this fits into here, but they've also, nice of them, they've included a one meter shielded wire. So I can extend this out to the outside of my box without any problem. And then this green connector here would go to the positive side of uh, my battery and that would provide the power for the meter. So that's a quick overview and um, maybe I should uh, start drilling holes and I'll show you how I put this together. Oh, before, before we get started, I just wanted to mention that um, I chose this particular one because obviously everybody 
raves about the Victron battery monitor but it's like $206 and yes it gives me the ability to um, look at my phone and check on the status of my battery etc but I don't need that I just need something that I can look at the battery box and occasionally once a month or whatever check the uh, capacity of my batteries so yes the Victron would be a very nice um, device if you have an RV or something where you want to uh, set it up uh, on a regular basis where you're checking it I don't need that so for I think this is between $30 and $39 I think I paid $39 on Amazon for it um, I paid 39 rather than 30 because this is the 350 amp version rather than the 100 amp um, I went for the higher amp in case later down the road I'm going to need it. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd just bring that up before I uh, went any further with the build. So uh, that was my reasoning behind this purchase. So I came down to the uh, basement and um, I'm thinking about I'm probably going to turn off the battery and take the whole lid off. One thing I don't want to do is um, drill down and hit the battery or hit any of those cables and I'm less likely to do that if I take this off and take it upstairs uh, where I've got more light and I can see what I'm doing and can move around. So I think I'm going to do that before I do anything else. So things didn't work out quite how I hoped. Uh, the uh, hole cutter that I had in the uh, workshop was too big. This is two and a quarter and the uh, gauge is just too sloppy in here. It, I could probably put silicon around it but um, it isn't going to work. So as I said um, you need a two and two inch, two and one eighth inch or 45 mil. So I went to Home Depot and purchase the right size um, bit to go in my drill. Uh, before I actually drill that hole, I've marked where I want to put the, the meter and I'm just going to dry it. Put a little pilot hole here and Let's go ahead and drill this here. Okay. Well, I was going to turn it over and drill from the other side, which is what I normally like to do. But wow, this brand new bit just tore right through that. So let me get the vac, clean that up, and we go to the next stage. Okay, that looks like that's going to be a perfect fit. Two and one eighth is definitely the right hole size. So let's flip this over, get this connected, and oh, seated down. Alright, let's uh, see how this is going to fit. I mean, I guess it, it's only going to fit this way around. I guess I could spread these out a little bit more. But, um, Well, I thought I would be smart, and because this didn't really get the edges here, I thought I would bend this out, and so I had a better grip on the board here. Of course, what happened? It snapped off. So, don't try this at home. It doesn't work. <laughs> what I've done is I've cut a piece of wood, a little bit of scrap wood, 
and I'm going to use that instead uh, to put this on here. Um, things don't always work out how you plan. So this is a little bit rinky dink. This whole plastic nut and screw here is not the best, and I'm sure. And the 200 plus dollar Victron has a much better fitting than that. But for now, we're going to go with this. And I'm going to put a couple of pads underneath here, I think, because this is still moving around uh, because of the thickness of the wood here. So, okay, that really was a pretty simple fix. Um, the couple of little foam pads under each end of the wood there and that's pulled that snugged it up nice and tight works perfect I apologize, but I had to uh, Put all this in there was no way that I could uh, Connect all this up together and video at the same time It's so tight down here in my basement that I was in the way all the time and couldn't you couldn't see what I was trying to do So let me just talk you through what I have done um, I have a copper bar connection uh, between the battery and the new shunt from the new shunt uh, I have my negative wire that goes from uh, what was from the battery all the way up to the grow watt. Um, and the, um, there are 17 millimeter uh, nuts on here. So make sure you have the right size um, studs um, uh, when you connect. Uh, that was one thing that I had to change. Also, um, the green uh, area there that you see, that little connector that goes to the positive side of the battery, that's a tiny wire. Uh, I, I used 18 gauge on that. And the um, you've got a tiny little screwdriver in there. <coughs> so that's a fiddly thing that you have to <coughs> play with. So sorry about that, but uh, that's pretty much uh, how this uh, whole connection works. Uh, let me see if I can come across here. <coughs> yeah, that's, that's my connection there <coughs> to the positive feed. So after a rainy day, um, my batteries are uh, recharging uh, at 25.49. Uh, so if I press this button here, it's showing that I, my batteries are 40% and that was has been climbing up it was 39 a second or so ago so things are uh, charging back up again this meter is so easy to set up all i did was put in uh, the battery cutoff point uh, and it worked everything else out it knew that it was a 24 volt system i've got two 12 volt batteries uh, in series and so this is a pretty simple um, capacity monitor it allows me to see the volts that are coming in you can also tell me what the amp uh, the amp the volts also tell me what also tell me what the amps are there's the amps so I think for 40 bucks that I paid compared with 200 I'm absolutely thrilled so for those who need to go out and spend two hundred dollars because they need the uh, added uh, features that uh, the Victron provides that's great but for me uh, do <laughs> DIY guy uh, this uh, this is a perfect system for me so here we are next morning uh, down in the basement uh, the battery is uh, discharged overnight um, so as you can see the sun's up and uh, the uh, batteries are now charging uh, our uh, new capacity uh, monitor is uh, showing that the battery is at 26.2 uh, volts um, I'm very happy with this it was easy to uh, put in um, I think it compares very favorably with the $200 Victron except that you don't have the ability to uh, check uh, the information on your phone uh, but for forty dollars, I'm very happy with it. Um, it's actually made by Camway, or at least that was uh, the uh, company selling it on uh, on uh, Amazon. 
um, I was saying earlier it was Ali. Uh, I think that's another model that I've seen, but this one uh, with the quality of the shunt and everything about it, I'm very happy with my purchase for $40. So if you think that uh, it's the right product for you, uh, thumbs up for everybody. Uh, please uh, like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate that.